Uh, really what we're trying to do is better integrate our um, GRF forces. We're uh, integrating with 4th ID and just get a little better rapid response for our GRF. You get that the mentality sometimes in the infantry that like if they're not with you, they're against you. And uh, we want to we want to squash that real quick. We work with everybody. We're all one team. So the the ability to work with a bunch of different programs and different guys that's a, that's a great asset to have. You never know where the GRF is going to get called up. I know there are places in Afghanistan that that get snow and temperatures like this. So. It's very viable that we, we could be finding conditions like this. As soon as a tank shows up, fuel usage goes through the roof. And just the amount of support that they need to, that a unit needs to anticipate when Abrams tanks show up on the battlefield is humongous. That's probably the biggest thing for both us to learn to relate to them, to give them head warning, and for them to anticipate and uh, request ahead of time. Our tanks are running, the radios are on, the crews are on board, we're just waiting for a word. If we were engines running like this and we got word to go out there, NCO, the commanders get on the tanks, we could be moving in the next five minutes, we could be there in 15. We've learned a lot more. It's uh, a lot more from the platoon and company leadership and above what they're learning how to communicate, but learning how to relay the way they, they uh, interpret and read the battlefield and having them put that into terms or into figures that an armor crewman or an armor formation will understand and are able to make use of. Whereas we, we hardly make uh, note of infantry we, we we attack infantry we take care of them but we hardly consider most infantry a major threat we suppress them and move on to the next target but learning what they see as threats and what we see as threats and putting that together in the prior making a priority list what they need us to hit first to protect them and then what they need to look out for to protect us How, where'd you see him? About five clicks? Yeah, yeah. How quick can you get up there? But, uh, you know, it's nice to get out here and see different units, see how they uh, operate and set up things compared to us, and uh, so we can learn some from them and they can learn some from us. It gives you an idea of like how everybody's going to be operating and if you needed to then you could join forces, you could actually work together and know what the capabilities are and what, uh, what light infantry can do and what mechanized can do for each other. Well my Bradley has a, a nice heater that I've, I prefer to use or I'll just uh, move the bags away from the engine, let the engine heat me up. <laughs> well, without a Bradley, pretty much, the battlefield is just man of tank, and man never wins against the tank. Um, making sure that you're you're wiggling your toes, wiggling your joints, because uh, those extremities are the first thing to get real, real cold. And once you lose those, it's not very excel. And uh, like I said, you want to be the best. You got to beat the best, and we take that on 100%. Uh, Huh? 
You want to be going up that hill right now? Small base plate. We do have a figured out kind of point wherever I needed to, and then just the level five. Level five soft shell for the Equus system. It's a. Uh, Some of our battalion issued us. Uh, Keep the snow off your boots. Take off your helmet. No. That's what I was trying. Where were we? OC! You dead? OC! 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 Big Romeo 3. Well, what's your first name?
your cap. Go ahead. Just pull your pin. 